because all that is is allowing them to apply for the liquor license okay. prior to um Eli, you want to speak on that? Hold on, man. Michael Elias? Montez. Join the meeting. Eli? Let me try I to thought bring, there was I'll, an email in the I'll, packet I'll, about I'll, this. I'll, I'll bring him off mute. Elias, you're off mute. If you could come in, address the council president's sure. question. About the, um, the waiver? Yeah, uh, we got this letter from the restaurant during the uh, absence from City Hall. So we didn't, apparently he sent it like March 26th or something like that was stamped on the letter, but it wasn't received by anybody in the office until April 8th. And uh, I didn't think I was free to do what was not normally done. And when I spoke to the staff in the office, they would typically let the 30 days lapse and that would permit them to go for the liquor license. Uh, Mr. Um, Castro asked us to do more than that because they wanted to get on uh, to expedite the liquor license for them. And uh, his email that's in your packet reflected their participation in bringing food to the uh, first responders recently, uh, I think like 170 meals, something like that. And uh, I didn't see any reason not to. They've been there a lot of years, and uh, uh, but I didn't feel that I was empowered to say yes or no. Thank you. Um, does any council person have any comment on this? No. Me so I, I don't. I don't. I don't have an objection to it. I'm. I'm sorry, council president. Go ahead. That's, okay, that's fine. Um, does anyone have an objection to it? So, the, the, Madam President, if I may, good, yes. evening. good evening. So, just to be clear, what they're requesting is that the the the, the, um, the liquor license re request be extended for another thirty uh, days. No, the, no. What, what, oh. what, what what happens is they have there's a state requirement that they give the locality a thirty day notice. They give what? I'm sorry, Mr. Goodside. They, have, they have to give the locality. I mean, the municipality a 30 day notice that they're applying for a liquor license. What they're asking for is that we waive the 30 days. We've received their notice. Uh, we looked into it. The police department had no complaints about the entity and there's no reason not to give them the license. We were going to just let the 30 days lapse and therefore they would have a right to get the license. But Mr. Castro, their attorney is asking us not to do that that we would waive the 30 day waiting time and let them go for the license right away. Okay. It's um, to apply for the license. It's not giving them, it's to apply it's to the right. state. process to apply. Yes. <clears throat> right, so wait, waiving the 30 days would just allow them to get a temporary license oh, sooner okay. rather than later. If, if right. you read well, no, I mean, I agree with Madam Council President, if I may, that anybody else who requests that it would be also, um, would be granted to them as well, right? Right. Yeah, I agree with Matt. So I, with, with the caveat, perhaps, that in the time that we had the, the notice, that we did call the police department to find out what their history was. Yeah, we always have to do that. Yeah, the office has, always has to find out if there's any outstanding, you know, uh, arrests or any kind of anything like that. Okay. So that's part right, of the I process. believe, I believe my, not, right. Right, and my, I think in my discussion with Ms. Stevens, who would typically be involved in this process, um, she stated this, that process, that when they receive an application like this, that they usually follow up with the police department to find out if there's any outstanding um, <clears throat> issues with the location. Um, okay, so do, okay, that's is fine. there any further action at this time? Uh, no, just uh, Mr. Goodside, this. just let them know they can go ahead. And if we receive any others, just let us know about it so we can uh, follow the same um, process. So can I write a letter under the city council saying that we waived the uh, process? Well, it's the clerk actually that writes the letter, not right. the council. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you want to continue with your um, referrals, uh, council? Sure. So, so then that means number seven um, is for information. Right. Number eight is for information. 
Um, number 16, I'm calling for because I still don't have an update. Um, number 19 and number 23 are for information. And then the last item, which is not in the referral packet, it got kind of lost, dropped out of the referral packet. But that was, um, I had emailed it earlier. It was regards to removing the boulders at Memorial Field. I thought um, we had passed that. No, we didn't. I'd like to, I'd like to put it on the agenda for Wednesday. Is there and a cost associated? Sorry, Madam President. Uh, go ahead. What's the cost yeah. associated with that, Madam? Um, uh, so Corp co Council, I don't think there's any cost. I don't believe there's a cost. Government. There's, right. Um, uh, well, I, 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 my last discussion with the commissioner was, did we know what the value was? Before we give these boulders to someone, do we know what the value is? Uh, so, my, if I may, an answer to that question. Yeah. So, who are we giving them to? Yeah. Um, I believe the agreement or the proposed agreement is Avanti. Um, Isn't it? Oh, never mind. Isn't. No, but let me let me just address um, Mr. John's uh, Corporation Council's comment because um, I my last discussion with the commissioner, he stated the only way to really find the value of the boulders or to get the value of the boulders would be to go to bid, and that would just prolong the process. That's one. Two, um, the cost to remove them from the field uh, far exceeds in his estimation, the value of the boulders. Um, based, so, on, based on what? Based on what objective evidence? Well, hold on, Councilwoman Parkinson, let her, let her finish, finish what she's saying. Just Sorry. Give her a second. Sorry. Please. Um, Councilwoman Dorte. Based on his professional opinion and based on his professional experience, but that to really determine the value of it, we would have to go to bid. <clears throat> but how, uh, okay. I will say this, that in the original uh, scope of work for the remediation at the field, it included a line item to move those boulders, but it was only to move the boulders to another part of the field. It was not to remove them. And the cost um, on that line item, I believe, was around $40,000. So just to move them on the field is going to cost money. To move them off the field and dispose of them will cost more. Um, and so we have... Um, we have a contractor who is willing to remove the boulders at his cost. You might get That's a few that would be willing to do that, depending on the value. Madam President, uh, Councilman, may, uh, yes, go ahead, Councilman Parker. I'm just wondering, um, what do they intend to use these boulders for? What, what's the? They would use them for fill. Okay. Okay. And so is it is it the um, belief that with the construction that is coming to Memorial Field that we won't have any need for any such fill? Do we know if that if our Yes, um, well, at least what we have from the county uh, and pressure from the county is to remove those borders that they're stating that we do not have a need for them in the con in the new construction and they want us to remove the boulders from the site. I believe even County Executive Latimer mentioned that in his presentation to the council when he came um, to present to us earlier this year. Uh, Corporation Council? So, well, I mean, you know, ideally in, in my discussion, you know, you have something of value to do the due diligence, you find out the value of it. I mean, just like anyone else, I understand that there's someone who's offering to do it. Um, they have the idea of the value of uh, somebody else similarly situated. I mean, I think our job is to, to get the best value that we can. I mean, what people would do is just say, oh, I estimate that the rocks are worth uh, ten thousand dollars. 
the removal of the rocks would be 15, so I'll remove the rocks for you for five. I mean, we don't have any sort of analysis, any yeah. kind of competing analysis going on here. Um, but, I mean, that is tempered by, you know, you got to move the project along and you got to, you know, we got a $25 million project that's on hold until we move the, the boulders. So, I mean, I don't, you know. Well, the 25, it's, it's more than that. If the, 20, if the project is on hold for various reasons, we don't move the boulders, the county is on hold. We don't move the boulders, then we don't um, complete the remediation that still needs to be completed. And if we don't do that, we don't have approval from the DEC to move forward. So there's, it's, it's an impediment to multiple steps that we need to take still before the county can even begin working. But um, if I may, hold, Madam hold President. On, hold on a second, uh, Councilman Fox. Councilman Thompson or Griffin, <laughs> did you have any input on this before Councilman Fox speaks again? I, I just, um, hi, yeah. this is Councilman Thompson. I just assumed that there was, um, we had a lot of the funding for all of that to be removed um, months ago. For the boulders? I thought the boulders were included in that removal um, when it was, a, uh, um, I believe at the time it was no. $400,000 suggested, Correct. but it was to fall um, under that spectrum. No, it was supposed to boulders. fall below that price, but um, wasn't that a part of the removal agreement at that time? No, so at the time, the agreement was to remove the, the um, material that was dumped that was part of that mound, uh, all of the area that is identified in our remedial action plan. Um, and the boulders are, um, are not part of that, we're not part of that scope. Okay, Councilman Griffith, did you have, no? Okay, no, Councilman no, Farquharson? I, I do, I'm just- it's, Oh, you, you have something to say? Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. It's, it's, it's just, you know, this whole memorial field thing, I really don't want to hold it up anymore, but it's really a shame. We have parks in the city. Um, the park by Scott's Bridge was all the stonework that's there are from the boulders from Memorial Field. So right. those boulders do have value. It's a shame that we can't utilize those boulders to quote unquote match what's there, right? So we, we've really, as a city unified, we've really messed up this whole memorial field thing. I'm afraid, we're, I don't think we're gonna be able to stand in the way of the progress that the county is giving us, um, but it's a shame, right? Again, we've lost again with um, something that is of valuable. It's criminal to me that people would actually believe and think that those boulders are part of the contamination, right? So yeah, we brought in some soil or whatever that was, who knows what that was, but those boulders were not. So it, you know, we just can't get out, get out of our own way. And I'm, I'm kind of throwing my hands up. The county has really come in and given us a lot of money to move forward. I don't think we can really stand in the way of the county, but it has to be said that collectively, and I'm not putting blame on any administration or any council person, collectively, we've just done this entire thing completely wrong. And it would have been a nice thing to preserve those boulders somewhere, somehow, so that we could utilize them someplace uh, and I, but I just don't have the answer to that. So I literally throw up my hands. Um, right. Yeah. If I may, Councilman. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, if we had a plan and, and a place where we could use those boulders and we had a place where we can store them until we could, um, you know, use them, then you um, just understand that that also in and of itself costs has a, has a cost. So just even to move them off the field and to store them has a cost. Um, we don't necessarily have the equipment um, right now to do it in house. We would still have to ask, have somebody do it. So, um, I, and I agree with you, the, ideally we would have gone to bid, right? To, to, um, to really get a value of those, um, of those boulders. But in the interest of moving the project forward and not really delaying it, um, I think that this just, just presents an expeditious solution um, at this time. Council. Thank you, Madam President. 
So if I may, um, I think that it behooves us to have some objective information on which we are basing our, in, um, our decision making. But that said, right now, the, 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 the um, memorial field is likely delayed anyway because of what's going on, right? So it gives us a window to at least do what the Corporation Council said, which is to try to get some estimation of what the cost could be and whether or not we could, even if we can save all the boulders, maybe save some of the boulders at some property that we have so that we have the opportunity to use it in the future. I am going to say that I will not vote to do away with these without any kind of objective data information figures that tells me that this is a good decision in the best interest of the city. I think we have a window. We, we have a window that COVID is invariably providing us, which is going to pop, pop, um, potentially delay to some degree the start of Memorial Field. So I don't have um, any information that that is in f that it will be delayed for very long. I don't know how big a window um, there may be or may not be. Um, what I do know is that the bid deadline is April 23rd. So um, well, Thursday. Is still, still the, the governor still has a halt on construction, right? There's construction taking place, so it's it's it depends on what kind of construction. Depends on the kind. That is true. There's um, affordable housing is still being built in the city, as well as uh, low income housing, because that's considered um, priority. That hasn't stopped. Um, what what item of the agenda is this? Well, it was so, an ad. You got an email to you today. Thank you. It's, essentially, it's essentially, it was, it's kind of like an add on. It was, it I thought we had passed the, it. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. The, I remember voting on it. Um, no, no, we didn't, we didn't get to vote on it. Um, I, I, I'm not even sure where we would find someone who could give us an estimate on, on a boulder. I don't I mean, even if know it's, if it's helpful, uh, I can you know, call the Council you know, Commissioner. You know. You could look at it. You could look at it. Really, the estimate is not. It, it could be the removal of the boulders, right? That's what the question is. How much would it cost to remove the boulders, right? And then whoever's doing it in the interest of the project of trying to get the project, I guess you could, you know, factor it. The that the only people that could give you probably an estimate is a quarry or somebody. Right. That's what I was thinking. I was trying to think. Of but that, that's basically it. And I don't think, you know, given all the considerations that everyone has said, um, I think that it could be expeditious. You know, there's not a lot here. It's let's call two more companies. Let's see, you know, what do you think about this? We have someone on deck. We want to move. We have to move this project along. There's very little temperament for any delay. Uh, what do you think about this? One, two, three. And, and, and right. see, see what people say, you know, and then you've done your due diligence. I mean, that that's all we could do. I agree. All right. Councilwoman Duarte, you want to speak to the commissioner about that? Um, well, I have spoken to the commissioner and I'm not an expert in this area, but he, um, I, I would defer to him to explain better to the council um, in terms of how to evaluate the value of those boulders and, and the challenges there. Um, I know that the cost for us to remove them, we would have to, it would be the cost to remove them and also the cost to dump them. And that's all based on weight. And, and so for but us to do, dumped. where would we put them? Well, it's not us. Somebody would take those boulders and use those for their own value. They're, they're, we're not talking about junk boulders. These, this is like stone. No, it's it's clean material. Right, but it wouldn't be dumped, and I can't imagine anybody would use that for fill either. Somebody would. There is a value to those boulders. The question is, is can we find that person to value them? I, I can't imagine they would be ground up as fill. Right, and I and I think that the the um the, I'm Councilman Duarte, if I may, Madam President, it's about um. In, you know, requesting, 
I guess is the word I would use, requesting the commissioner to, to make additional efforts um, to find folks who can give us a quote, right? So it's not that we doubt his expertise in any way. It is that we're asking for additional information, which I think is always, um, you know, more is always better for in this instance, when we're making decision, decisions about, you know, um, the, 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 the um, taxpayer's dollar. I think more is always better. Um, Mr. Oh. Holmes, would you be able to provide me with, or, or if you can email um, Commissioner Edder the dial-in information, if he's available, perhaps he can dial in and, and still provide some insight tonight. Um, uh, my understanding is Commissioner Edder is out sick, so he has not been in at City Hall. My I, understanding. I saw him. I'm sorry, he's back. I saw him when I was there on Thursday. He's back. Okay. Yeah, saw, I saw him on Thursday okay. when I was in City Hall. Mm, but let's see, let's see if I have a number for him. I um I wasn't aware of that. All right. But I can well, 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 that's, that's just, okay. We're gonna you I, that that's the last item in my in right. my report. Okay, so we're gonna continue with our referrals. Um Councilman Thompson, human resources. Yes, good evening. I have um two on the um roster for tonight, but I just had a question for number 15 regarding the transfer of functions to the HR department. Um Corporation Council, did we um, get all the information needed for that? Is that a go? Um, I, I don't know if you I, if you recall a couple of meetings ago during the, the uh, committee meeting, uh, there was a presentation by Mr. Wagstaff um, that gave the practicalities of actually the, the pros, the cons, and the practical reasons. I don't know if there were any uh, outstanding questions from any of the council members uh, about that. Um, if so, I'm willing to address them either. Obviously, I don't want to give legal advice in a public meeting, so I'm not going to, I'm going to refrain from that. But if anybody has any more questions of me, I could either opine privately or, uh, you know, if you want to contact me, I can get more information from Mr. Wagstaff who studied the issue. Madam President, if I may. I don't think she heard you, Councilwoman Parkinson, if you can say it again. Mad Madam President, if I may. Um, I just wanted to say, um, Corporation Council Johnson, that I'd asked, um, had there been um, any contact with the, the financial department, we'll say. Has that, you know, has, it, has that been broached at all? Um, that, that was my question then, and it's still my question. By whom? I don't know who's going to do that. I guess it would what be- What was the uh, question? I'm sorry, I missed it. Oh, sorry. Um, Madam President, um, I asked, you know, has the has, has there been any discussion with um, with the controller's office? By whom? By who? By, by Councilman Thompson. Have you had a discussion about this? I'm just wondering, wondering whose responsibility? Uh, no, at this moment, the 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 um, controller is unfortunately refusing to see people. Um, no matter how many times you try to have a meeting with her, you can stand in her face and she'll just turn her back and walk away like she doesn't want to be bothered. So um, I've had, I've tried to schedule meetings um, on several occasions since February with our comptroller. Um, and she has refused to have meetings with me. Uh, she said she would get back to me and um, to no avail, I still haven't had a meeting. And this is now um, coming to the ending of April. Um, I, have you written any letters, Council, Councilman? Councilman? I think I'm um, going in person as I have been doing is better than a letter, but um, I can surely um, send her an email as well uh, to follow up with trying to schedule meetings. I'm just thinking that it's, sorry, Madam President, that it's good to have a record of your efforts. Well, when I can, when I can go in person or call, I'd prefer that. 
because sometimes that moves the envelope that works with these state officials, but I digress on that. Um, <laughs> are you finished with your uh, referrals, Councilman Thompson? No, so we're gonna we're gonna call for uh, oh, call geez. for it. We're gonna call for number fifteen. Okay. Um, and also, um, I have twenty, which is nutrition contract under recreation department. Is that nutrition? Is the C a, a typo? Yeah, I think That's it's a typo. Wondering. It's the nutrition. Yeah, it's the meals. It's the nutrition contract. Okay. I believe that's that just, the yes, that should be on the agenda, number 20. Okay, does that complete your? That completes mine for tonight, thank you. Okay. Uh, I believe there was an add-on, no? I thought this was the, ad the add-on was the, that nutrition. I don't see anything on my file. There was an additional, wait, hold on, let me. Well, I'll come back because I'm trying to um, look at anything, if anything was sent to me. Okay. Public safety and codes. Thank you, Madam President. So item number two is called for. Item number three is called for. Um, item number um, 11, um, I would like to engage the body in a discussion about the charter revisions. Um, so um, if you, you know, if you want to weigh in now, that would be would be helpful as to how you want to proceed. I know that you, the meeting was held with that um, you know, that consultant group. So I don't know if the body wants to weigh in. Was the meeting held with the consultant group? I thought they, it was, wasn't it? Yes, Councilman Griffith, you and I were on a call with them. You were on the phone with them, I think. Yeah, that may be true. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I thought I remembered that, but I, I didn't participate, but I thought I remember, remember that it happened. With the Benjamin Center, I believe. Yeah, that's what I'm referring to, my um, council um, Councilwoman Doherty. Um, yeah, okay. So, uh, so okay, so I'll call for that, those as well. And then I'll ask that, you know, if you can um, just, you know, give consideration to how you want to proceed on that and let me know, then that would be helpful so we can move this forward. Um, I always thought that a uh, charter revision was under LPW. How did it end up in public safety and codes? Does anybody? No, madam. No, it should be under legislation and, and public works, I would think. But that's not important tonight. Let's just provide feedback and then we'll we'll proceed. To with move that. forward, right. Okay. Did um, you have anything? Oh, you had the um item 13, Madam President, is is for um item 13 is for information. Um item 14. <clears throat> Um, is was a contract to um, to uh, to extend or to increase services from Empress for a cost of an additional sixty thousand dollars for one and a half um, ambulances. Um, I sent some information that I got subsequent to that. Um, I'm still pending, um, or we are still pending, because I asked them to send it to the fire department. Um, uh, a quote for providing additional um, full-time ambulance services, increased ambulance services from AMR. AMR informed us that they have two on, um, ambulances that are in the city that are part of the mutual aid agreement, but those, those ambulances uh, remain in Mount Vernon, even though they're not as, um, they're not assigned to Mount Vernon, they're mutual aid, and that the capacity of those ambulances has not been exhausted. So based on the, the volume of calls, they were saying that there was still um, room for them to absorb more calls. So, so that um, along with the exorbitant rate that's being um, proposed by Empress gives us the opportunity to seek additional <coughs> quotes from AMR and to know that they, they um, you know, 
the demand for ambulances is not yet exhausted. Okay. Any um, corp council you have it? No, I guess we've got none. Does that okay. complete your? Um, and then item number 22 is called for as well, Madam President. So both 14 and 22 are called for. And then um, there was one item that I proposed, but it's not, it's not an add on, but corporation council did get back to me to say that he would assign a member of his team to explore the, um, the ban on leaf blowers in our city. So he will be getting back to me on that. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Um, uh, Madam please. Councilman Farquharson, can you give me number 12 again, please? That's, number 12 is called for, as is number 13. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. 13 is for information, I thought. Uh, that's what I had originally. 13 so is information. Changed, 13 is for information, yes, sorry. 14, I think, is called for. That yes, ma'am. Right, four, 14 and 22 are called for, 13 yes, information. You. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Griffith, finance and planning. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, items one and four, I'm asking to be called for again. Um, items nine, 10, 17, 18, and 21 are all for information. We have um, came through our email uh, four pieces of legislation that came via William Long from the planning department. Um, I guess those should be numbered as well as add-ons. I'd like all four add-ons to be on the agenda. So you have the fixing the rates for the county and so you should read them since we're not really in front of each other. You have um, them to the, read the ones that you're putting on? The well, the, corp council? The, the four that I'm referring to are the ones that came from uh, William Long in an email that he sent. Oh. I did not see those in the packet. No, they, they were delivered on the weekend. Right. The one from about establishing the escrow for Correct. 256. Correct. So you have those or you don't? I, I do. I need to know if the rest of the council has them so they can um, lose them or not. Do I have the, um, the establishing the escrow for 256 East 3rd Street? Right. I came in uh, over the weekend I and I have to fix the tax rate for the county and special district taxes for 2020. From the assessor, or no, actually from, uh, from the controller. I think it's from the, the controller. controller. Yes. So you're putting those two on as well? Yes. So let's see. So, so tax rates. Well, we have to do that one, I think. Mm -hmm. And Either then the county suspended interest. We have to do the set the county tax rate. Okay. Um, Deputy Clerk, were there four items from Mr. Long, or do we have? I'm looking for them now. I got it. Okay, here they are. There, there was, um, I think, two, two. There were two communications you received from him. One at, on Friday, and then one at. at uh, over the weekend, I believe they overlapped or they kind of repeated some things. Um, and then you received a separate one from Commissioner Morton. That was. Uh, before we go on with that, yes. I, Councilman, I think Councilwoman Duarte was right. Um, Councilman uh, Thompson, there was an additional thing from the Recreation Department. To accept the grant for sixty thousand. Yeah, I see it for sixty thousand dollars towards um installation of the the mini pitch. Yeah, you said put that one on. That yeah, must have been one on the agenda. And that okay. was that was received today. Yeah, that, that came in today. All right, so we have agenda. it. And so you want that as the agenda item, and that is for. That's the yeah. add-on. Thank you, and that's for yeah. HR. Yes. HR. Thank you. And that's for the sixty thousand dollars from. 
Right. And you do have, I think I forwarded that at the end of the day, that that may be the yes, one from I Sylvia Plants. Along with the attached pictures as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. I apologize. Uh, Councilman Griffith, you were saying? So, so yes, I'd like, I think I have the one from regarding the county tax rate. Right. The add ons. I have one add on from William Long regarding the neighborhood. A, a neighboring municipality referrals process. And I think that was an email that was sent. I thought it was sent earlier, but it looks like it was sent Sunday 419. It was sent on 419. It was also sent, I believe, as part of that, what was sent to you on Friday or, okay. or Thursday or Friday too. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have to read these. Right now. Um, there's an additional one regarding the establishment of escrow for 256 East 3rd Street. Yeah, that one was delivered over the weekend. Got that one. So I'm going to call that um, add-on number two. Okay. Oh, so the, the 256 the is add-on, the 256 is number two. Yes, the, 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 the neighboring municipality, what number do, would you like to give that, sir? I'm going to just call that add-on number one. Number one. FP number one. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a letter regarding the adopted, adoptive corrective site plan amendment legislation. I don't know if we're, that's the one that came from Commissioner Morton. Right. So I don't know if legal is ready for that to go on. I would like for that to go on as well. I'm sorry. Um, I'm trying to catch up with all these different add-ons. What, what, which one did you say? Um, add-on number three, adoptive corrective site plan amendment legislation. Uh, said by Commissioner Morton? Uh, yes, it was dated. The letter was dated April 16th. Tax rate is number four. I'm sorry. Okay. Is this? All right. That's number three, you said? That will be uh, FP add on number three. All right. So the site plan is number three. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. The corrective site plan amendment legislation. All right. We got that. And then um, tax rate. FP add on number four would be amending chapter 267, article nine and 10. I'm sorry, article 11, 11 entitled zoning amendments legislation. Uh, yeah. That's going to be number four. That would be add on number four. All right. I, I don't know that I have that one. It's what, what number is the tax rates from the county? What number is that one? That would be and an add on? That would be number five. FP okay. Number five. Okay. And there's no referral letter associated with that, right? Uh, which, which one? For the tax rate. There is. Oh, from there is. The controller. Okay. You have a copy. Well, I don't know if you have a copy, but we uh, uh we prepared it already. Not not a problem. We're good. Yeah. We're good. And Dang. then, and then I have legislation that I'd like to introduce. Um, Brian, I've been um, you know we've spoken about this. It's quite extensive. Um, it kind of. It's well, I was looking at this before the county did what they were going to do, but I'm using their rate as the lowest possible rate. I'd like to introduce legislation that calls for the city tax. Well, let me back up. One piece of legislation I would like for partial payments to be allowed for all years, including 2020. And that will be one piece of legislation to not commingle the other piece of the legislation that I'm about to introduce. So um, partial payments, tax payments for whatever other years we haven't done it for up to and including 2020. 
Absolutely. I think we did up to 18. I think it's just 19. 19. We did no, up to 19. We did, yeah, we did, we did, we did up to 19. 19. Yeah, Councilman Thompson did. So, mm -hmm. so that, that I would like for that to be one piece of legislation for 2020 partial payments. I would then like an additional piece of legislation talking to all of the interest penalties for the city and the county taxes to be a half a percentage point until June 30th. So to be 0.5%. Till June when, Councilman? June 30th, 2020. Thank you. And what's important is that we're gonna, I think the council should review that percentage rate on a regular basis. So right now, this very low percentage penalty, if you will, will get us through June 30th. And that's substantial. And I'm not talking just for 20 retro taxes due. I'm talking for all years due for all taxes. Wow. So that's all taxes that's outstanding that you're talking about. Absolutely. Wow, that's brave. Oh my God, what happened to you? I've been in discussion for the last, what, week or two um, regarding the financial condition, the socioeconomic conditions of our city. And I've talked to a lot of people with deep understanding and deep confusion. We have, I don't think we've ever done this. Mount Vernon is in a different boat than any other municipality in the county. And it's time, we shouldn't penalize people with punitive damages and not help them resolve their issue. And that's our goal. You know, if I was near you, I, I think I would probably give you a hug. I, I hope this is recorded. <laughs> it, it's, it's serious, it's real, and I would, I would have loved Wow, to I gotta good. applaud you because I think that's pretty, pretty amazing. It's, it's substantial for our community, it's substantial. So I, you know, at, at a later time, I'll begin to talk about the people that I've spoken to about this and we've gone back and forth. Um, so yes, half a percentage point. And, and it was difficult because we had to find out what legally we could do, right? And that's critical. So we can definitely do the city taxes. We can definitely do the county taxes. Um, bring them down to half a percentage point. The other tax entity that we can control punitive damages is the school tax um, penalty that's charged on February 20th. It's 5% interest over the whole period of time that you may have missed school taxes for that year. Mm. That belongs to the city. If we are able to collect it, I'm asking for that to be a half a percentage point as well for all years that are due. The one tax that we cannot decide on nor do we collect are the school taxes interest of 1% a month every month. That belongs to the school district. So the, the big difference is the school district because we collect the taxes and we give them directly to them. What's important to know is that the school district is looking to collect their own taxes starting July 2020, which means that on July 1, 2020, the city of Mount Vernon is gonna have a bill that we need to pay to the school district. We should not be dragging our feet trying to collect that money. We need to get that money fast so we can forward that to the school district and the school district can forward it to all the people that they owe to the library, et cetera, et cetera. So yes, I'm asking for that additional penalty to be dropped down from 5% to 0.5% um, effective immediately, which would be Wednesday. And we can adjust that. And I, and if- It can't it, be Wednesday because the, the, if it passes, the mayor has to sign off on it. It couldn't be before the mayor signs it. Ab absolutely, of course, right? It has to go through all the entities that it has to go through. Um, and you can call me tomorrow and convince me why I would uh, vote for 20 years or for 100 years. Well, how, what is the city round? 18 <laughs> till now, and way from five, to, and how the city will survive <laughs> with no money. Well, you can convince me when you call well, me tomorrow. Well, the, not the not now, not now. <laughs> you can call me tomorrow and convince me. The, the challenging thing is that we've asked for uh, politely 
um, directly. Um, all the right ways that us as politicians do to get information from the controller's office. Now, you know, I've been starting to write letters to document um, what we're asking of the controller. What we're asking for is not ridiculous at all. It's pretty basic. I've broken it down. She still has not replied, communicated, nothing. People have been reply. asking me about our county bills. I think most of us received our county bills over the weekend. Uh, my corporate bills I have not received yet, so I suppose those will come either today or tomorrow. They always have a little delay from the homeowner bills. Um, there's things that we need to know. There's also a payment schedule for when we need to pay the school district and the county. So we have to pay the school district 60% by, by May 30th. I think we're going to be able to meet that because the, the escrows and the mortgages out there will pay a good percentage of that. And there's a lot of people in Mount Vernon that as soon as they get the bill, they pay it, get it over with right away. So I think we'll be able to meet that 60% mark. I really don't know, but I think we will if the controller pays it. I can't guarantee her payment of it. I, I do believe that the people of Mount Vernon and the taxpayers will pay it in time. So this is an opportunity for those that are falling behind to catch up, to be in our good standing. And then we have to be honest, there's gonna be people that just can't make those payments. They're not gonna be able to make it. Um, and there's nothing more that we can do other than bring it down to zero, which I don't recommend um, at this time. So um, I think it is groundbreaking. Um, the, the county did it. We're doing it more. The county only did their uh, retro taxes for the 20 tax bill. Uh, we're reaching all the way back to try to get as many people caught up as possible. Mortgage interest rates are really low, which brings another point. I've made a point that People have tried to come in to, have, to get tax agreements from the city of Mount Vernon so that they can go out and get a mortgage. No bank is going to allow anybody to get a mortgage when they owe so many taxes to the city of Mount Vernon. They need agreements. So by the first May meeting that we have, I hope to have prepared um, tax payment agreements that we can negotiate, sign off on, send up to through legal, so that people can have a document that protects their homes from us coming in. That we can no negotiate. That's not, that's not really, well. We can negotiate. I don't, well. We're the council. Yeah, that's but, you, but it's, that sounds like a legal thing. Well, but again, when you call me tomorrow, you can convince me of this. Well, what the council can do is we can set up the parameters that go out for everybody. It would be a blanket agreement and we will work out those details. And you just come in, and if you owe $20,000, you can pay that $20,000 over two years at this percentage increments until you're paid off. That's what we will negotiate. Can be done. We've talked to former council members. We've had research done in the clerk's office. It can be done, and if the controller isn't gonna do the work that she needs to do to protect our taxpayers, we have to do it for her and she will have to follow our ordinances as it is in the charter and code. Madam President, if I may. Uh, yes, Councilwoman Dorothy. I believe in our legislation that authorizes the comptroller to accept partial payments. It states that those agreements should be approved by um, Corporation Council as well as the, count as well as the City Council. I don't know that that's ever been done or it hasn't been done during my time on the council. That, that's well, I guess the presumption is if we drafted the agreement, we are uh, in support of it because we drafted it, right? So that's our approval of it. You, you vote that it can be done and we vote on the terms and stuff of that nature. But anyway, we'll take a look at it when it comes. We'll be happy to help. The, the controller's office is an elected position, but that department is solely a department that has to follow the rules and ordinances of the city council. If we say that there's a blanket agreement for people to make payment, uh, make a payment agreement for back taxes owed, and that is the ordinance of the city council, the controller must follow it. That's what we're asking to be done. Uh, any other comments on this? Councilman Thompson? Oh, will you finish Councilman Dorothy? I'm sorry. 
I'm, I'm just, I was had a question for Corporation Council um, because we have approved partial payments uh, up through 2019. And um, are there any partial payment agreements um, filed with the Corporation Council's office by the comptroller? Not that I'm aware of. And you would be aware of it, wouldn't you? <laughs> Not that I'm aware of, I haven't received any documents from the comptroller's office. Okay. I will just note um, to share that the comptroller's um, public forum, I believe at the end of the year, at the end of 2019, she did state that she has had great success with the partial payments and many people have come in to take advantage of that. So I was just wondering if those partial payment agreements have been filed with the Corporation Council's office. Well, if I may. Um, um, one second, hold on a second, uh, Councilman Group. Councilman Thompson, did you have anything on this or you wanna? No, okay, go ahead, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Councilman Group. I'm sorry, I was just trying you, to- Are you trying to unmute? Yes. No, okay, Councilman Griffin. Um, the partial payment agreements aren't really agreements. Um, I, it, I, you may or may not know uh, that if your tax bill is $2,631.82, you cannot walk in with $2,000 and pay that. You can't pay three cents over the amount that's due and say, forward that to my next tax bill. The controller cannot do that. So if you owe your base amount of taxes, your interest on top of that, and any penalties on top of that, you have to walk into the controller's office for that half tax bill with all the penalties and the interest calculated on the spot, you write a check for exactly that. And people have had problems with that because people say, I can't save $3,000 and pay you exactly all the change and everything. I want to, I have a thousand dollars today. I want to give you that. No agreement. I just want to give you a thousand dollars. So that $3,600 bill is now $2,600. So there's no need for a payment agreement with for that. I'll, I'll come to you in a second, uh, Councilman Thompson. The what what pay, what people need is a payment agreement that says the city has agreed with the taxpayer to not take their property, even though they owe five years worth of taxes. We will do a payment agreement with you, and we won't take your property, but you have to pay that amount. You can take that to the bank. And the bank will say, great, the city isn't going to take it we will, as long as you make that agreement. Now, the bank may loan the taxpayer the money for the home. The bank will probably say, we want you to pay off all your back taxes. But what they really want is an agreement because they're scared that they're going to come in, that the city's going to come in and take their house. Take the property. People are dying for that, especially right now where interest rates are historically low. This is the time that people should be able to, and it's unfortunate because people may not be working right now, right? So we really, this is the opportunity for people to walk into the bank and say, I have a payment agreement from the city. I've worked for the last three years. Yes, I'm back on my taxes. The city has bought into this because they've reduced the interest that's due. This is my opportunity to catch up in the most critical time ever. And I say, let's do it until June. Before June, we could extend it because people may say, I, it takes me three months to get my mortgage. You only did it for two and a half months. We need more time. I think we will as a council through success of this, give them more time to a point where we have collected a lot of that money that's back due. And a lot of people aren't living in fear about the back taxes that are owed. So I, I hope that explains the difference between not only for you council and Duarte, but for anybody that's listening the difference between partial payments and a true payment agreement. In New York City, and I think I might've said this before, you can walk into the desk where you pay your taxes and say, I need a payment agreement. And they automatically give you a 10 year payment agreement, 10 years to pay off your back taxes. They put you on a quarterly schedule and you can start paying it then. In New York City, you can now pay your annual taxes, not quarterly, but monthly. And they're doing that because people just can't budget to save up all this money to pay it all in one lump shot. It's better for people to pay it monthly. And they're doing it for everything. The water bill, sanitation bills, 
is scheduling people off is better for the common man and woman. Okay. Councilman Thompson, you had a question? No, I just wanted to um, commend um, Councilman Griffith on um, you know, trying to get this passed because everyone knows I've been I've been advocating for the, the homeowners and and making sure that they they have the ability um, to have those partial payments done. Um, but you know, it's it's always been uh, uh, we've always been worried about um, transparency of the, the controller's office collecting these funds and how they're utilizing things of that nature. So going forward, I, I just I just hope that the um, con um, the comptroller agrees to um, meet with us, agrees to come to terms with what we're trying to do for the taxpayers, and um, we can come to a solution. Okay. Madam President, if I may. Uh, yes, Councilor. Thank you. I'd like to push the envelope. I'm so, because I'm feeling lucky with you, Councilman Griffith. So I'd like to push the envelope. <laughs> I'd like to say that and, and, and there are, there's one or two cases that come directly to mind of folks who had this problem with their property and whose property in recent times have been taken um, you know, <clears throat> or foreclosed by the city. And I'm wondering if we could extend that tent in some way to begin to think about how, you know, there was that one gentleman who works for the city. I'm not gonna identify where he worked, but he worked for the city. And he had a family home that was taken for just that situation where the taxes went from a little bit to more than 100,000 because of the interest and penalties. And so I would like to ask you to begin to think about how we could perhaps make that retroactive for, you know, for a couple of years or for five years or for whatever, so that we can expand that tent for someone like that who works for the city, who has a reliable job, who has income, who's willing to, you know, it might be in our best interest to try to redeem that property to the family because then that would restore it to our tax roll. So, so you know, I don't know how and if it's possible, Corporation Council, but I think it's something that we should think about. Thank you. If, Thank you. Uh, if I may? Is that, I, I just, that's you or, or Corp Council? This is Marcus Griffith. No, no, I mean, I thought he wanted to speak first. No, all right. Uh, Go ahead, uh, uh, Councilman Griffith. Um, Councilwoman Farquharson, what's important for me is to hear that story directly, right? One thing I've learned from Oprah is whenever anybody comes up with something that's happening to them, you had better believe it's happening to other people as well. So the stories I need to hear so I could understand different people's perspectives, right? So if you tell me that story and you don't have to give any names or whatever, sometimes it helps to give some names because it connects more, right? I mean, not in public, but it, it connects. And then I could translate that on what we can do, what we can't do and go from there. So I think retroactively, what, well, let me back up. One thing we haven't done in years is truly take people's houses. There's a lot of people out there that are hanging on a string and it's stressing them because they wanna pay, they wanna pay but they, they just can't get over this, this hump. I think this gentleman that you speak referring to may be in that boat. I'm hoping what I've done, he's captured in that. But if there's something that I'm missing, it's quite possible I'm missing something. I wanna hear that story directly. Right. So that capture that as well. Yes, we wanna help people. We don't want people's houses. It's not our job to take people's houses. It's not a Thank benefit you, thank you. Madam President, if I may, um, he came to our city council meeting. Um, he's a firefighter. And I, you probably don't recall because we have had a lot of stories, but I know um, Councilman Thompson was shaking his head because he remembers the individual, right? Um, but, but this was a compelling story. And, and, and I think that, like you said, that there are others you know, in similar circumstance who can likely benefit from the discretion of the city, which in the long run, I think will make us a better place um, you know, with, with committed people who will remember, kind of like Mr. Smith goes to Washington. Mm -hmm. Okay, is there anything else on this topic? Anything yes. else in your committee, uh, Councilman Griffith? No, I, I, would just, I would just like to ask legal to have that legislation um, to us before the meeting so we could review it and make sure we're comfortable with everything. Um, the wording, um, I think there needs to be a number of whereases um, that we all may want to introduce 
to, to crisp it up, right? To make it the, the baked perfectly. Um, it really needs to reflect um, the conditions that, um, and you know, what we really want to relay to our public. So those whereas is really need to, to come out in this legislation. As, as usual, we're here to service the council. So absolutely, I'll be working with you over the next day or so. Thank you, thank you. So finally, I have, oh, um, Deputy Clerk, you had something? I do, I just wanna confirm, I think you had four items, Councilman oh. Griffith, and if I, can, if I can review those four items and there may be additional ones coming from that. I think I have number one as the neighboring municipality, that's your additional uh, add-on item number one for FP. Number two, I think you had mentioned that it's a zoning amendment. At first you mentioned tax, the tax rate, which I have the, the documentation to address that question, but the zoning amendment one, is that listed as another name of some kind? Um, and you said something about chapter 267, perhaps? Or, um, so I, number one is the neighborhood. Um, neighborhood, neighboring municipality. I have that, yes, sir. Municipality. Mm -hmm. The second one is 256 East 3rd Streets um, escrow. escrow. That's the number two escrow, yes. I, I, three I, would be that. what I wrote down Thank here you. as corrective site. Number three is the site plan amendment. Um, I'm sorry. Yes. Number three is site plan amendment. And then number four is article 11 of the zoning get that last one? Oh, you said article 11 of the zoning that's right. that's that's the piece i don't have but i'll we'll we'll follow up to that that was something sent separately yes uh, all through the plan i can share that with you tomorrow i have it you have it you have it tomorrow yeah i can share that with you no no problem Okay, so that's something I don't have. Thank you. All right, so then number five would be the referral from the controller regarding the county. No, that would be that would be the point five percent. Would, no. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry. Say again, sir. That would not be. That is the letter from the controller setting the rates for the county taxes. That would be item number five. And then item number six will be partial payments for all tax years, including 19 and 20, but I believe we did 19. So just 2020. <coughs> right. And mm -hmm. then number seven will be the changing the rates to 0.5% for county and city taxes until June 30th and also the 0.5% for the school tax penalty from 5%. And Brian, if you have any questions on that, please let me know. Yeah, I'll, I'll call you tomorrow. We'll talk about it. <laughs> Perfect. So I have um, that. Do you have that all, uh, William? I do. Thank you. So I have a proposal from a company that, a local company that sanitizes um, in response to this uh, epi uh, pandemic, you know, they sanitize buildings. Um, and I guess it would be deemed, uh, I'm going to run it past you, um, Corp Council, that it would be deemed emergency. So I have to talk to you about it tomorrow. I'll forward it to all of you. I just got it about five o'clock and I haven't gotten the chance to send it to you. I'll send it to you all once we get off this call. Anything else? Um, I do. Yeah. Who you spoken? Uh, go ahead. Uh, we'll go in order, in alphabetical order. That lets me off the hook. Go ahead. I saw you, Councilwoman Twart. <laughs> Thank you, Madam President. Um, so I just wanted to make a note: the uh, DPW Commissioner Edder is attempting to call in, to call in, and he's having some trouble. Um, but he may be hopefully still joining us. I'm sorry, there's just one person who just came in under the audio line. 
if you can identify yourself and, and if you are Commissioner Ederer. <coughs> are they muted? They They're are all muted. on mute. They are all on mute right now. Mm -hmm. The the new person who just came in on okay, the audio do line. Do you have to unmute just, them? I do not. They can they can <clears throat> unmute themselves. If, but I think they are if they're not mute unmuting, then I believe they're probably just the public who's been asked to stay muted. So if Commissioner Edward, if that is you, please unmute. Otherwise. Is there I a can, different number he should be calling? No, he can call that, but he would just unmute or or if you gave him whoever invited him, were you, was he given the was he given oh. the video? link or was he just given the call in number? No, I just texted him the call in number because that's okay. what I was able to do. Yeah, if that's, I just have three, num three numbers here and all three have stayed on mute when I've asked them. If it's can inside, you try I unmuting them uh, and see if you can, at least the new one that just came in? I can unmute all of them and ask them to identify themselves. I can do that, yes, one, two. Three. Folks who are on the audio only line, can you please I've unmuted you. Can you please identify yourselves for the council? Mark Ederer, Commissioner of Public Works. Jamie Passman, Citizen. And one more person, please. Jeff Monroe, resident. Thank you, Mr. Monroe. Uh, the other two, if you can mute, um, Commissioner Ederer, if you could continue. So thank you. Absolutely. What do you need? So, Commissioner, um, we were discussing the proposal for the removal of the boulders at Memorial Field, and the question raised was with regards to um, what is the value of those boulders, um, and, okay, and the, that, that was determined, or if you have some sort of estimation of that. Okay, the, the value of the boulders, first of all, depends on, it, 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 it's, it's, it's not a, a, an abstract uh, value. It depends. The value, value of rock depends on the quality of it, the cut of it, uh, et cetera, et cetera. These are rough cut, uh, rough boulders. They would have some value if we could deliver them to site or if we were prepared to load them or if we were to crush them into, into smaller stone that was suitable for use as a uh, roadbed, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, to the best of them, of, of what I've been able to de determine in the last two weeks while I was in quarantine through internet and through discussions with uh, the shoreline contractors, et cetera, et cetera, is the value of those boulders is exceeded by the cost of what it would, would take to uh, load them and deliver them off site. Um, Marcus is on mute. Councilman Griffith is on mute, on mute, and he's talking. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Walkerson, I think, wanted to say something else. Yeah, I, I was just going to say, um, uh, Mr. Adderer, thanks for being here. Um, the question that I certainly had and um, is that we have no, we have no objective evidence, nothing at all to go by, no figures. And I think that we cannot make decisions um, about anything without having at least some guiding principles as to what the cost is that would be for removing them or what value they may have to some other entity. I think, um, and I think that's what the council is looking for, not just an abstract, it's rough cost. Okay, well, the, the, the cost to remove them would be about it would be approximately $65 per ton. And we're, we're looking at about 2,000 tons of boulders. Uh, the cost to what they're worth is very difficult to ascertain because normally when you purchase stone, it is either delivered to the site or you come and pick it up with your truck and you have somebody available to load it onto the truck. So, so, we, so, so in order for us to even sell this stone, if we, if we wanted to go that route, we would have to stockpile it somewhere because it has to be removed from the field 
before the county is willing to take over and move forward with Memorial. And we would have to transport it somewhere and stockpile it. And if we were to put it out for, for, for purchase, we would have to be available for allowing somebody to inspect it and determine if it was worth anything to them. And we would have to have equipment and manpower available to load it onto the trucks in order to complete the sale, because that's normally what happens with a quarry. Normally, when you drive around and you see somebody that's got fill they want to get rid of, there's a sign that says, free fill, come and get it. Not, we have fill for sale here, come and, 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 and we'll tell you how much we want for it. Um, so in doing research and not knowing the quality of this stone, it's certainly not landscape quality, so we couldn't sell it as landscape boulders, which are normally delivered and brought onto site. It could possibly be of value to a shoreline contractor who wanted to use it as riprap, but once again, normally it's delivered to the site or barged to the site or made available for pickup and, and somebody is there to load it onto a, uh, onto a contractor's truck. There is just simply no figure out there that I could find from any quarry or any place around for rough cut rock of, of nondescript character that you have to come and bring your own equipment to load and take off site. Were there other questions? Um, Follow up questions for Commissioner Edera? No, no questions, no. but one thing that I don't want to do at this stage of Memorial Field is standing in the way of progress <clears throat> because of some rocks. So as much as I think these stones and, and everything Commissioner Edera said makes complete sense, no offense to you, um, Commissioner Duarte, but he, he really he pinpointed the the difficulty of these stones. I have a piano at my church that was manufactured in Mount Vernon, New York, or at least was uh, purchased through Mount Vernon, New York. There's literally Mount Vernon brass inside. And I don't know what to do with it because nobody wants to move it. And the church wants it in the garbage. So it's kind of the same thing, right? You can't save everything. Um, I think we may have to lose this stone in, in for the sake of moving Mount, a memorial field forward. Uh, Councilman Thompson, I see you. Yes, um, just just like um, Councilman Griffith said, I don't I don't want the stones to be um, like Parkinson said earlier. I don't uh, I'm glad that we have a little leadway at this time. However, we don't want the stones to be the whole and the end will be all to why um, we can't start the project um, in Memorial Field. So moving forward, I think we have to do what we have to do. It's unfortunate that we may um, lose the stones with without any um, income from it. But however, we, we need to move forward to make sure that um, Memorial Field is built and done and returned to the um, residents of the city. Anything else? Uh, I, uh, the, the only other thing I have to offer is the cost that it would be to uh, relocate the stone to say Hutchfield or some other location and potentially put a specification out there for bid for somebody to come and take the stone for their use. Uh, that's another option, but we're looking at expending, you know, 40 to $50,000 to relocate that pile of stone and then have to deal with loading it onto somebody's truck if we go to, uh, to, 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 to attempt to sell it. And we run the risk of nobody even bidding or being interested in it. Uh, even the contractor here that's willing to take the stone, who happens to be the guy that cut it out of the rock, knew it was there and it was convenient for him. He said, I have a need for stone. I can get stone various different places. I'm willing to take it away from the field. I have my equipment. I've even let him bring his equipment to the field where it's been sitting for a couple of weeks. And he's becoming less and less interested in the whole scenario because he's been picking up stone for nothing here and there and everywhere because there are a thousand places out there where people are looking to get rid of stone and looking to get rid of fill because 
Mm-hmm. They're not quarries and they're not equipped to load the stone and sell the stone. So I think it's in the best interest of the city of Mount Vernon to move forward with this. I think it's a win-win for everybody. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Ebra. Uh, Councilman Thompson, you had something else? Yes, I think I think if we have someone who is willing to remove these stones at no cost, um, you're saying, Commissioner, right? No cost? No cost, indemnify the city. They've already given me their insurance and named the city as additional insured. And, uh, the, the, and, and, and we've prepared a memorandum of agreement for the mayor. Uh, the, the, the other thing I have to add is this stone has to be relocated at some time because Tully's got to come back and remediate the tennis courts and the stone is presently in the way of doing that. So I would be forced to have to relocate this stone either using city forces or paying a contractor to relocate it uh, within, within the next week or two if we don't move forward with in some way trying to dispose of this. So it's important that we um, definitely allow the, the company just come in, the guy to come in and remove those boulders because we're getting them removed at no cost um, I don't. I don't see the necessity for us to utilize any more of the taxpayers' dollars to just move from place to place, and then ultimately probably lose out all money. Um, you know, so I, I. I think um, we should just get rid of the boulders. It's unfortunate because if we had more time, we can, um, you know, see other ways to utilize it. But if it's not going to cost our taxpayers a dime. Um, to get this done, I, I think we should go with that. Well said. Any we, other, um, thank we, you. We, any other questions when you need them? I didn't. I, I have nothing more to add. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Edward. I'm glad you're feeling thank better. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm well. I've been back to work for a week. I'm feeling fine. I got more energy now than I had before, if that's possible. But <laughs> good for you. There you go. Does someone, uh, any other council person had something on this? Uh, no, so I just want to be clear that um, they were putting this on the agenda for Wednesday. Sounds good to me. If that's the council's desire, we'll make it happen. I would like it to be on the agenda. Okay. Anything Thank else? You. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Anything else, uh, Deputy Clerk Holmes? Mm, no, but Councilwoman Duarte, I do, I did miss your your referrals for five, six, and seven. For uh, five and six are called for. Seven is for information. Okay, and nineteen and twenty-three. Information. Information. M- Madam yeah. President, if I may. Yes. Council. Madam President, um, it's it's April, and it's the time when we would typically be um. <laughs> acknowledging community members, right? And I know we are in difficult times, but I wondered um, if, if, if it's not something that might be appreciated by our community at this time. You know, we've lost so many community members. Um, and so I wanted to um, ask if the body would still consider doing it, even if we did it, you know, um, you know, using technology in the same way until we can acknowledge, in, you know, in physically, but to acknowledge some community members as we typically do. Um, it's always uh, important, especially in times of crisis and when trauma is present, to try to maintain as much normalcy as possible, right? That is reassuring to to everyone, to the system, to the body. Um, And so I would like to suggest, Madam President, that we do that, that we um, maintain that um, practice. And even if it's a little late, even if we do it in May, that we maintain the practice so that we um, convey to our community that we continue to operate with, with, with as much normalcy as we can afford at this time. Okay, I, well, today is Monday, and since Wednesday is the meeting, I, the, the soonest it would be would be May. So uh, what's the pleasure of the rest of, of the body? I agree. We should definitely- um, You're, you're muted, muted. Uh, Councilman Griffith, you're muted. Okay. 
That's, oh, that's wrong. Um, the second, <laughs> that's just so wrong. Um, sorry, everybody, that was not right. <laughs> um, this, I, I suggest the second meeting in May. Thank you. Councilwoman Duarte. Um, that's fine. I was wondering if there were about uh, perhaps um, we want to, uh, maybe too many, I don't know. Um, but if we want to acknowledge uh, those that we have lost due to the COVID uh, virus. You know, I, I think, sorry, might have been. I think it would be a different event. Yeah, I think so too. Do yeah. some, some more um, positive, more uh, building people up then you know we we all have to deal with the trauma of this uh, thing every day i've lost no less than 12 people in the last two weeks so i i know the names <laughs> so <laughs> i'd rather uh, do do it do it a, uh, another time perhaps yeah. we can come up with some sort of a, a, a monument some sort of something in front of city hall like we did with 9 11 with other things i mean it's a different yeah. kind of thing it's quite unusual, but perhaps there's something we could come up with. Right, right. I agree, Madam President. And I think, yeah, maybe like a plot or a garden or just some kind something of planting. Like that, yeah. yeah, that we would do to acknowledge because I think we're, we're not through COVID-19 yet. And it's probably no. going to take many more of our community members and our loved ones. And so, you know, at, at, at the appropriate time, we'll, we'll get the opportunity to acknowledge that in a more significant way. Okay, if there's nothing else, I'm going to go listen to Teddy Riley and Babyface on Instagram and see who has the most, the most, the best music. All right. All right. Thank be you. Safe. Everyone be safe. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Have a great evening, everyone. You too. Thank you, folks. Thank you, folks. Be safe.